Hi, Jer. Hello. How's 2022 looking to be? How's the harvest going? Beautiful quality. Uh, I'm very positive about the quality of uh, 2022. It's a lower yielding uh, uh, vintage. So that that's good because you know that the leaf area to fruit well ratio is, is very good. So it's like you have like fruit thing vineyards. So very, very nice quality, and nice tanning, very high quality tannins, and a lot of color, you know, just natural color, beautiful. Um, so we are doing all the, the cold soaking uh, in the reds and the, and the, the colors and the uh, maize, the maize is amazing. Uh, lower yield, of course, that, uh, that explains part of the, of the high quality that, that we are getting. And also, it's a good climate vintage. Uh, that, that, that's very, very nice. So, uh, mm. we, we are quite, quite positive about the, the, this season. Excellent. Very exciting. Um, okay. Thanks for taking the time out of harvest, even though it's, it's at night, um, to taste some of these wines together. No, no, so thank you for your time. And uh, I know that you have been tasting uh, most of our wines from the different wineries. Uh, I, I am the, the vineyard and the winemaking director for for, uh, for Trapiche. Uh, but my, my background, of course, is in the, in the ground, you know, uh, studying soils, climbing, uh, designing vineyards, planting vineyards. And now I'm in charge also of the, of the winemaking team. So trying to to think more about the terroir and the terroir we're making. So uh, we're, working, we're working quite hard with all the team trying to, you know, to produce the best wine that reflect the sites in the, in, the, in, the, in the terroir. I know that, you know, when you taste it, we need uh, to concentrate. So let me know what, what the, you need about the terroir or the time of the year and uh, I can explain. Yeah, just um, a brief overview about the, the vintage and then uh, about the specific terroir because um, these are all the terroir series. So I'd be quite interested in uh, when Trapiche decided to start the terroir series, uh, how it collected all the vineyards over time. Um, and also in general, when because it's, it's been up and coming over the last few years in Argentina, more producers focusing on single terroir, single parcel, single vineyard. When do you think that all started and when did uh, Trapiche start doing that? Okay, okay great. Uh, yes, we, we started with this, uh, with this project in 2003. Uh, I arrived to Trapiche in 2004, so I was from, from the beginning mm. working in this, in, this, in this project. So the, the idea at that time was, as you said, perfectly, perfectly said that we were trying to show that the one from Argentina, but not just from the soils and the climate, but also from the history, the, the story behind the the, the, the vineyard. That's why we choose among our growers uh, the three best Malbecs. Uh, then uh, that could change every year, but then we decided to keep the same growers that you know the quality was very consistent year after year. But the idea was not just showing the soil. Uh, and the climate, but also the, the story of the growers behind behind the vineyard, because as you know that the, the, the mind behind the vineyard is very important in the word expression. So uh, in, in our team, in the culture team, we, we try to follow and to make some advice to the growers, but we, we like to keep the grower uh, to, to have the, their own experience and express the, the, the vineyard uh, owner uh, the expression of the terroir. Wine. So that's why we put the name of the of the grower in the bottle. And, and, and I always said that uh, we uh, the growers in Argentina deserve a lot of credit uh, for the Malbec because uh, um, we will take some Malbec from 60, 70, 40 years old. Uh, at that time, in the Malbec to, to have Malbec in Uruguay was a very bad business. Uh, you know, in which so, vintage? Sorry. Uh, at that time, when this grower decided uh, to plant Malbec in their vineyard, it uh, was not a good business to have Malbec. You know, was, uh, mm -hmm. uh, the best vineyard was to have high yielding grapes uh, in your vineyards, but they were sure that Malbec was the variety that best expressed the climatic 
expression sort of the of the of that site. So uh, they deserve to have the, the name of the growers in the bottle. So it's a kind of tribute uh, to the Argentina small growers. Uh, mostly of them with the European heritage, you know, uh, were Italians, they made Italians. Um, so we, we at that time we were really today very proud to have the name of the grower in the bottle. Uh, it's not the trapiche vineyard, it's a, a, a grower vineyard. Mm. Um, and, and regarding the white there, uh, the, the, the first wine that is uh, um, 30% Chardonnay uh, coming from Las Piedras vineyard, that vineyard is very special for us. It's a small alluvial fan from uh, Los Olmos Creek. Los Olmos Creek is a, a developed a very small uh, alluvial fan. It's the only vineyard planted in that alluvial fan. It's in Turja, uh, 1300 meters above sea level. Um, and it's very close to the frontal mountain. So that place received uh, some humidity and cloudy condition from, from the Pacific. So we, that, that vineyard we, uh, is almost a semi dry farm vineyard because sometimes we irrigate two or three times during the season. Uh, right. You know that in Argentina we have to irrigate, but that vineyard needs very little of water uh, because the root system is very very deep uh, because of the you know the, all the stones are mixed the soil profile uh, so the root system can follow uh, the matrix of the soil between between the rocks and can go very deep and and look for water very deep in the, the soil and and also that. Cloudy condition, some rain coming from the Pacific, uh, they us to manage with very low irrigation that, that site. And how is the, the production for 2020? Um, so, I mean, obviously, 18, 19, and 20 were a trio of really great years. Um, yeah. Uh, how did it compare to the other two? And do you have a favorite out of the three? That's a typical question, the favorite, but uh, I will take last or clear. But you know, uh, 18, 17, uh, 18, 19, and 20 were wonderful vintage, quite different. Uh, this is a 2020 vintage, uh, was a, a, a warmer vintage, mainly during the springtime. Uh, it was a very short vintage because the, the production was quite low, as well as uh, 2022. But it was a, a, you know, a, a warmer spring, so you have very nice uh, growth of, of the canopy. Uh, and then in February, you have more normal, normal change. Um, but also, it was a warmer, a warmer vintage. Uh, so the picking moment was very key. It was a, was a, key, a key decision. Uh, in, in, the, in the Chardonnay, we, we, we tried to pick in, uh, in three different uh, uh, ripening uh, moments. You know, we, we pick at 21.5 degrees. Uh, fresher in order to have you know, very nice acidity and, and, and uh, how many bricks? Sorry, and twenty one point five the first the first peaking moment, then twenty two point five the second, and the third one with uh, twenty three point point five. So um, because each of the of the peaking moment you have you know you, you can have different different aroma compounds there and. Uh, Different, different, of course, different acidity. It's it's uh, wonderful and rich and generous, but still very, very elegant and very fresh and very balanced. Yeah, and I guess that that could uh, that could be explained because you, you go through it three times and you start at the lower bricks for the acidity, the freshness, and then build up to the more riper tropical fruit notes. You, you are you are right. In, in whiskey, in that region, that, that was. Uh, warmer than average so mm. uh, because when you have low production in the warmer climate of course that the ripening process is very fast so um, in, in, that, in, in that vintage was very a key decision to have uh, or to pick it in three different different moments that uh, is, uh, was a very good decision of the of all the team to do that let's move to uh, el tomillo chardonnay Perfect. Perfect. Well, this uh, uh, the, the, the is in Guantajari, uh, and 
We know that are different than the same. We know the district, the Guantanamo district. This is uh, the district that is located in the middle part of Guantanamo, of where the highest calcium carbonate content of the soil. Uh, that, that, that part of Guantanamo will become when the IG is approved uh, in Algo. What is that? Because the high class government content in the, in the soil. Oh, it's beautiful. It's it's more complex. It's got this mineral and smoky character. There's like flint. There's seashells. There's ripe and dried fruit. And I guess that's that's the terroir speaking. You are right. You know, we try to make you know the precise uh, BT culture we are making. We just want to to show the the, the sites in the in the. In the and then, do you uh, the, these two Chardonnays, even though they're from different areas, do you uh, use the same winemaking technique, same time and barrel, or are they different? No, we we, we change a the, the barrels. Um, you know, we we have big, of course, this one all these wine are and big. We we press up to six hundred millibars. So then we, we, we put all the all the all the juice, we settle the juice to around 200 uh, NTU uh, to humidity. Uh, we, we, we try there to oxidize all the polyphenolics in that in that stage. Uh, and then we start uh, all this uh, white yeast here. We, we don't use any any selective yeast and in other wines and also in the in the Chardonnay. Uh, we, we we start the, the Fermentation process, uh, and when the fermentation process starts, we move to barrels uh, and to fullers to just keep going with the fermentation and finish fermentation there. Um, we do in, in that way because we don't we, we don't have we don't want to have a bit of temperature in the barrel, so we can handle handle better the temperature of fermentation if we start the fermentation in in, uh, in, uh, in concrete times. Uh, in concrete bats or in the same still, uh, so then we ferment in, in full less in, uh, and in, in barrels. And then we, we keep, of course, in uh, over the list, to list, uh, because that, that gives you, you know, all, all this uh, velvety and uh, just a, any kind of creamy, creamy, uh, creamy profile. Um, great. Shall we move on to the reds? Uh, yes, perfect. I guess uh, we can start with the uh, 2021 oak cask. Perfect. Well, this this, uh, this is, is coming from uh, Luján de Cudo, was in the, the first growing area in, in Mendoza, the most traditional growing areas in Mendoza, uh, are coming from, from different regions, landed. I should say between 800 meter of sea level to uh, 1100 meter of sea level. So it's in the in the 800 meters to to how how high? Sorry, 800 meter and 1100 meter above sea level. And many the salt types there are more silty silty low uh, because in that in that part of the can can the culture is more silty. Still, this is the low soil type, so our good soils, looking for the expression of the, of the red fruit of, of, of Malbec. So, uh, uh, so it's a fruit driven, but at the same time, it has, uh, we, we use uh, some American oak in the, in the, in the Malbec. He said, you know, $10 bottle on return, we pay the price of this, of this uh, wine. So, it's a you know, very nice wine for that, that price range. Uh, it's a very good expression of, of what is my background in here and from the first growing area. Very soft, very ripe and soft and round. Yes. Very drinkable. Yeah, very drinkable. That, that's the idea of this, of this wine there. Yeah. Mm. This is sold as oak cask in the States and then Reserva in the rest of the world? Yes, it's uh, under the same uh, label. And in the US, uh, uh, market that is our main main market for for that wine is uh, nine ninety nine US dollar retail. 
Okay, I have, um, so I have Finca Orellana. Okay, Orellana um, is, a, is a beer located in La Consulta. Uh, this beer is the oldest beer of the old terroir series uh, Malbec. That beer is uh, around uh, 70 years old, 70 plus years old, so it's uh, mm. like 74 years old, something like that. It's a very old vineyard. It's the traditional way that the immigrants planted Malbec in Argentina. Here. So it's, uh, it's a kind of a European style style uh, of vineyard. It's a low PSD, vertical suit position, positioning, but very, very low. Uh, high density vineyard. Mm. I love the nose of this. It's uh, like much more darker fruit, like dark plums, blueberries, like even like some charred bark and tobacco. And I get this like um, yes. a, a bit of dill, so like slight herbs, but like darker, darker herbs. Yeah, it's very... more, yeah I agree. I totally agree with, with your, your comments. It's kind of inky, inky style of uh, mm. It's fascinating. Less of the less of the bright red juicy fruit. It's more darker and yeah. The, and when we we when we we send to you the the coneto that is coming from El Peral, you will find a different different profile. You know more to the red fruit um, red fruit uh, profile the coneto because that soil has more silt content than original soil. So you have a more it's low ripening, uh, more gentle ripening in the Peral. And in also in the Peral, this vineyard that uh, is uh, around 60 years old received a little bit of shade from the Peral hills. So it's very cool for the Peral hills. So they received the after afternoon a little bit of shade from that uh, from those uh, hills. Uh, so it's a, a different profile, fresher, more red fruit. Okay, now I have uh, Ambrosia. So I'm mm. here. I do get some more uh, fresh red fruit on the nose for this. So dark cherries, but also some raspberries, some strawberries, and also some mineral notes, some slate, uh, stones, and some a little bit of lemon zest as well. So a bit of a fragrant citrus. Wow. Mm. Compared to Oriana, the the tannins are quite a bit firmer, still very, very fine, but they're much more present, there's more structure to this. Totally. You have that really, really tannins, you know, mm -hmm. in your tongue, and uh, it's beautiful. A fresh tannin, you know. Yeah, it's, it's also fresh. quite tight and compact. There's, there's a very clear structure to this wine. Yes, yes, yeah, very focused wine, and, uh, you know, uh, and, and it's fresh in the mouth, you know, it, it is very, very complex wine. Yeah. If if anything, I think this would need a couple more years before before fully opening up. Yeah. I I had a I had a question about um, what your opinion on uh, the future of Argentina in terms of varieties, um, because Malbec is Malbec is amazing. It's suited to all these terroirs. It's beautiful. But do you think with global warming, you're going to see more and more of the Cabernets, Cabernet Sauvignon, Cabernet Franc uh, being planted. Do you think those will become more popular? Well, that's a you know, very important, important question, difficult to answer. I, I think that we, we have a lot of potential in Cabernet Sauvignon. Um, you know, I am a fan uh, of Cabernet Sauvignon. I have studied you know, a lot of uh, in Cabernet Sauvignon. I, when I did my master thesis in UC Davis, I, I worked with Cabernet Sauvignon in Napa in, uh, in Tucanum property. That is a kind of you know, magic vineyard there. And uh, I, I had the chance to, to, to work with irrigation, different trade systems in, in Cabernet. Cabernet is a, is a, is a vine that uh, reacts a lot uh, according to the match. You know, if you irrigate a little bit more, your quality decreases. You stretch too much, you, you, you wouldn't have very hard tanning, harsh tanning. So, it's a, it's a variety that uh, 
is uh, is beautiful to manage the in the in the, the baker. We have to type soil for Cabernet Sauvignon. Uh, I think that we we need to put more focus on Cabernet. All of our expertise have been put in Malbec, trying to find the best spot and working in the, in the winery, in the vineyard. Um, but, but Cabernet needs, in, in my opinion, much, much more attention than Malbec uh, because this sensitivity to much, you know, to yield, to irrigation. As I said, Malbec, you have to irrigate. Uh, not too much or not too stress, but Cabernet likes more the stress. Uh, uh, we have to work a lot with, with tonal material as well. Uh, we have been working with some drones like 412, 412 uh, from Bordeaux, and 169 uh, drones. Um, and uh, yes, I, I think that we, we, we have a lot of potential in. Cabernet Sauvignon, Cabernet Franc is like, uh, you know, uh, feel very, very, very good in, in, uh, in Argentina. It's like the, the best companion for uh, for partner for Malbec. Okay. Uh, I have the Malbec and Cabernet Franc. Yes. Let's go. Okay, this is our, <laughs> as you know, this is our most last wine in, in mm -hmm. A BJ and we have been working very, very strong trying to, to, to craft the best, uh, the best sky. We have been you know, working and working in order to produce any kind of wines uh, that can reflect the, the, the site. We, the Malbec is coming from Guadalajara as well um, because we get that texture of tanning that we are looking for, that first step tanning, that complexity, focus wine uh, with a bit. Very nicely balanced as well. And then the current front is coming from uh, a vineyard that we haven't tasted any wine from that vineyard that is a Milagro vineyard. Uh, is so, which vineyard? In, uh, is in the Milagro vineyard, is, uh, in the current front is coming from that vineyard. It is in the San Carlos department, is in Eugenio Bustos. Uh, you know that in that area, the Tunja River. You know, develop two different alluvial farms. The, the newer alluvial farm that is where is Alcamira located, and then the oldest alluvial farm from uh, from Puja River. This we are located in the oldest alluvial farm with very high uh, calcium carbonate content there. Uh, and of course, in, in that vineyard we we fruit thing, we fruit thing, we keep just one cluster per shoot. We make a very precise vineyard management uh, in the in the Cabernet Franc. Uh, and around thirty percent of the of the of the of the blend is uh, is Cabernet Franc. So Eugenio Bustos is uh, is uh, the the Cabernet Franc, and Guadalajara is the the Malbec. So you said that it was thirty percent Cabernet Franc in the blend, right? It's complex and perfumed on the nose. So both red and blue and black fruits, some currants. Again, I get a little bit of uh, that citrus zest, a bit of orange zest, uh, yes. which I love. That is from, from the what does it? Mm. Mm. Almost, it's uh, beautifully textured, so the tannins are the tannins are very fine but very present, um, and I love this like supple, caressing texture to it. Mm. And uh, I'm noticing I'm tasting the 2019 for the Syrah, uh, but we tasted the 2018 for the Malbec and Cabernet Franc. Uh, do you keep it for longer in in barrel, in fudre, or in bottle before releasing? Uh, sorry, uh, less time for the Syrah and more time for the Malbec. Okay, the, the, the Syrah we use uh, fudres for uh, mm -hmm. we use uh, these fudres for for aging the, the the wine, and because of the of the tiny structure of the sky Malbec uh, Cabernet Franc is, is that. We we keep more time in the, in the bottle for Malbec Cabernet Cabernet Franc. Uh, 2018 and 2019 was regarding timing. Uh, I should say that it was a kind of a normal uh, year regarding climatic condition for for the 2018 and 2019. Uh, 
both here in March as a quite good decrease of change during March. Um, 2018 was slightly cooler than 2018, but just very slightly uh, cooler. It was kind of normal, normal climatic condition. As, as we were discussing, 2020 it was uh, warmer. Uh, 18, 19, 17 was kind of normal climatic uh, condition. Uh, 2016 was kind of cooler, was the cooler. Justification for beach in Argentina. Wonderfully perfumed. Um, I remember you saying the the white pepper notes coming through, definitely, along with black peppercorns as well, and some herbs and some olives. Lovely savoury notes on the nose here. Yeah, and, and you know that Syrah is, is a kind of ionic variety as well. So regarding, regarding the nutrition, we do the fermentation, we try to encourage some of the uh, ionic expression in, in, in Syrah. Uh, so regarding nutrition, we, we use the kind of the same strategy as uh, Sauvignon Blanc probably. But the tannins are just seamless and like melting into the fruit. Um, Marcello, it was wonderful to meet you and talk to you. Um, thank you. <laughs> And I hope we get to meet in person sometime soon. Of course, uh, for me it was, uh, it was a pleasure to meet you. Thanks again. Have a wonderful evening. Okay, you too. You too. Bye bye. Have a nice day.